hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be converting a paint tank into a pressure pot for casting resins. Well, for as many different makes and models of paint tanks, there are videos on how to convert them. And the reason that you would want to convert a paint tank into a pressure pod is for the simple reason of getting the air bubbles out of a resin casting. There's something about doing it inside a pressurized environment that gets all the air bubbles out and gives you beautiful crystal clear castings. And that's why we're going to be modifying this one today. Well, the tank that I'm going to be modifying is the 10 liter power fist pressure tank from Princess Auto. Now, this thing retails at regular price for about $200, but don't worry, you can get it a lot cheaper if you just watch for sales. They go on sale quite often. So keep your eye out for sales on them if you're interested in this project and you can get it for about half the price of that. The way that the tank paint comes when you purchase it is pretty much what you see here with a T fitting and then a pressure release valve, an elbow with a swivel connector, uh, another elbow with another output and a threaded hole in the middle for the handle as well you have your rod which pulls the paint up through the tank itself. Now the way that these things work as a paint tank is you apply air pressure inside the tank, you regulate it with a regulator which this also comes with and once you get the tank to pressure Basically, you have two output hoses. One output hose is here. This is paint and this will go to your sprayer gun. And the other one comes out of your regulator, which is air pressure that will go to your sprayer gun. And the two of them combined allows you to pay, spray paint. We don't need the output application. All we care about is the pressure. We also don't care about sucking paint up from the bottom and in fact that rod will just get in our way. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove that rod that pulls paint up from the bottom of the tank. Now this feed tube is just a regular right handed thread and you'll just need to unscrew it and completely remove it. Don't think you're going to be able to do it as easily as what I am doing here. I have already removed this ahead of time and um, just placed it in there for the sake of the video. It is a bear to remove. I'm going to tell you that right now. It is a bear to remove. They have got that sealed in there really well and a heavy duty pair of either channel locks or a pipe wrench will go a long way to help you to get this out. Well, now we're going to work on capping off our outputs that we don't need for casting. And the first one we're going to work on is our paint output. And I have loosened this and taken this elbow out, cleaned up all of the fittings from the factory um, sealant. On this side here, this is the output. This is where the paint comes out and this is where we want to cap it off. And for that I've just gone to my big box store and I've bought one of these 3 8 black iron pipe caps. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Teflon tape on the threads and I will essentially cap off this end, tighten it up, and then more Teflon tape on these threads and put this back to our output so that that will be perfectly sealed up. So one thing to keep in mind when wrapping threads, I've seen a few people do this, you want to wrap the Teflon tape in the same direction that you would turn uh, its connector to tighten it. In other words, in this case, we're going to be putting on a cap. The cap will be rotated clockwise 
this way to tighten. So you want to spin your tape that way as well. Um, I find that if you don't do that, you run the risk of it pulling off or peeling off automatically once you put your cap on there because now you're going against the wrapping. You're actually unwrapping it as you're going. So get your Teflon tape on there and let's get this sealed up. Well, we're now going to turn our attention to the input side of our pressure pot. And initially, I was going to change the configuration of what they have here. What you see here is pretty much the way it comes. Um, and then after I got it all taken apart, I thought, you know what? I kind of didn't have to do that. So um, I have removed all of this stuff here. I am going to put it all back together um, and seal it all back up the way it should be with new Teflon tape. But essentially um, for this pot, for the input, we're going to leave it as is with the pressure release valve here in the same configuration on this T as well as um, our elbow here in the same configuration. Now if we wanted to, we could put um, our regulator just directly into the pot here, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to clean this all up and put this back together the way it was from factory, and then we'll carry on from there. Well, now that I've got my input put back to the way I want it um, with my safety or pressure release valve in place on one side and my elbow fitting on the other side, um, I think we're pretty much ready now to place our regulator in place. If you look on the back of the regulator, at least with this particular model, there's arrows here and the arrow is showing you airflow. So the air input from the compressor will be coming into this side and out of this side, this would have gone to the paint sprayer or our paint gun. So this is the side that we want to cap off. Like I said, all outputs capped off. They're useless to us. So for that, I have purchased a quarter black iron cap. And the same fashion that we did here on this output, all I'm going to do is Teflon tape onto the threads of the output and spin on our cap to block off that, that feed. And we will just spin that on there. Just like that. Well, the next thing that I've purchased is a ball valve. And for this, I have female and female ends, quarter inch. And uh, I will put on one end a quick connect for my air compressor hose and the other end will go to my regulator. We will apply more Teflon tape and I will get our shutoff attached to our regulator. There we go, just a little bit of Teflon tape on that joint, just like that. And now we will thread our valve on there. And we'll thread this in here. All right. And once we're happy with that, the last thing that we need to do here is to apply Teflon tape to our bottom part of our regulator and we're going to connect it into our swivel joint right here and that will complete the uh, modification or the assembly of our pressure pot. There we go. 
And now, my friends, if you wish, the choice is yours, you can screw the handle that came with it into the top of your lid. Before we can use this, we need to do a pressure test. We need to make sure that this thing is going to stand up to the pressure and that there are no leaks in the system. Having leaks in the system at this point makes the thing absolutely useless. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to put the lid on our pressure pot. We're going to hook up our air to it. We're going to put it in probably you know what, I'm going to try for 45 PSI and see what happens. This pot is rated for 50 PSI, but I'm not sure what the safety valve is rated for. So let's, uh, let's put some air into this tank and see if we have any leaks. Now guys, I would like to point out that for this pressure test, um, if you should get a leak in your system, don't be discouraged. Don't, don't think, oh no, what's going on? This is why we test it. We test it to find potential leaks in the system. And uh, finding that leak is actually one step closer to having a really great pressure pot for your resin casting. So don't feel discouraged about that. Think of it as a successful test. So we're just going to tighten down our lid latches here and once we get them tightened in place we'll apply some air to the tank a little more pressure And there at the moment I have, let me just see, 30 pounds of pressure in that tank. I'd like to bring it up a little higher. It seems to be holding just fine with the 30. I don't hear nor feel any leaks in the system. But you still want to take it slow and make sure that everything is fine. You'd hate for this thing to pop. So let's take it slow and we'll take it up another 10 PSI. Well, there you can see we've got it up to about 46 PSI. Um, I'm going to disconnect our air hose and I'm going to leave it for 30 minutes and see what we end up with for pressure at the end of 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, we can see that the pressure loss here um, is next to nothing. Uh, I tried to keep the camera in the same spot so that we could get the same angle, but then I bumped into the tripod and that didn't happen anymore. So we're not quite done yet here. There's one more thing that we need to do to convert this pressure pot, and we're going to get into that. If yours is leaking or you are having major uh, pressure loss and that sort of thing, you want to mix up some soap and water, spray each of these threaded joints where you sealed up uh, all of the uh, exits and all of your tape joints here where you connected parts and just make sure that there is no leakage there. The soap and water will bubble up and you'll see where the leak is and then you can just add more Teflon tape and redo that joint if need be. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results here. So for now, I'm going to leave this one. And if the pressure loss increases any further, I will redo the joints and do proper testing all the way around. So let's release the pressure on this and get to the next step. Well, the next thing that we need to do, and the final thing here, is we need to do something about the bottom of the pressure pot. Now, what I mean by that is because of its purpose, because of what it's used for, which is to draw paint from, the bottom of our pressure pot is actually concave. Um, 
It is not a flat bottom pot. It dips down. That's not going to work for us as far as a, uh, a resin pressure pot because putting a casting in there now will put our casting off level and cause it to, uh, to dry like that. That's not going to work. So, what we need to do is make a false bottom here. And for that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the diameter here across the, the pot and I am going to cut a circle at a quarter inch MDF and I will put a small hole in the middle that I can put my finger through and pull it out when I need to remove it, let's say for cleaning or that sort of thing. But we're going to cut that base and drop it in place. final dimension of our false bottom ended up being nine and one eighth inches um, and that just sits in there just like that and it gives us a perfectly flat bottom to place our molds in while we are pouring our resin and there you have it converting a paint tank into a pressure pot for casting your resins Guys, this project is unreal. It is so simple, it's pretty much done for you. All you have to do is modify a couple parts. Truth be told, all in all, uh, the extra parts that I had to purchase, being the two end caps and that one ball valve, cost me $14 Canadian, all in, taxes and everything. Um, I could have gone cheaper than that, but I went with a higher end ball valve. I didn't like the smaller ball valve that uh, was the cheaper one. So the ball valve was the most expensive part. Those end caps are about 92 cents a piece. Now, how does this thing work? What kind of a quality of a resin casting does it give you? Well, I'm gonna show you that on next week's show because I hope you're gonna join me for that when we're going to compare two different castings, one done outside of the pressure pot and one done inside. And hopefully you'll get an idea exactly what it is that this pressure pot does and the results that it can yield. Until that time, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the show. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I'm sure we're going to be doing more casting as time goes on. And uh, we'll try to think of some different projects on Alternative Tuesdays to play around with the resins and see what we can figure out. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the project. And I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. Oh, <laughs>